Being a girl athlete was never as easy as it is now. Before 1920, girl athletes weren't granted the pleasure and equality of competitively participating in sports. Girls were segregated by sex and were unable to have the same opportunities as male athletes. Therefore, an organization called the Illinois League of High School Girls Athletic Association, better known as ILHSGAA, formed in 1920 to promote intramural league play for girls in high school sports. It began with the Chicago native third of six kids. Rosemary Giles. In 1892, she earned her degree from Rockford Female Seminary in Education and Religious Instruction for Young Women. Following her Rockford achievements, Giles moved into the Hull House, founded by Jane Adams. Hull House was such a huge, had such a huge impact on society and change in society and making life in cities uh, more livable. And the whole idea of helping young people play in playgrounds and getting physical activity and how that helped improve the quality of life, I think was um, something that she really was at the forefront of. By 1893, she had become the primary director of the first gymnasium to be built in Chicago, as well as teaching women and girls physical education classes at the settlements. She remained a director for 14 years and slowly introduced team competition in women's sports. Despite her colleagues discouraging competitive play for girls, Giles coached the first organized girls basketball team in 1896. She feared that the reporter would come and say horrid things about our customs. If the papers write up exaggerated accounts, I am afraid my girls, who have no desire to pose as new women, will discontinue the game. In mid-1890s, new women were thought to be way too masculine. Playing competitively was misinterpreted to give girls manly strength and was not womanly, or that it would veer off course from the traditional female. Some physicians also believed sports for women could bring physical disabilities to these athletes. Giles presented her ideas about physical education for women to the Hull House residents and found the support needed. In 1907, Giles resigned as director of the Hall House Gymnasium and became the first PE teacher hired at J. Sterling Morton East High School, recognized as one of the best physical education programs in the state. By 1928, Giles and six other colleagues began coaching girls teams such as basketball, soccer, hockey, swimming, tennis, and baseball, in which were one day play days where no records were kept. These women were really resourceful. I think if Hull House hadn't um, come about, they would have found something else. Because I really believe that they they were a generation that was very committed to more than uh, the roles that had been defined for them. This group of innovative thinkers help prop women to what they are today. Without these revolutionary nonconformists, women would have digressed the modern female. This goal was not easily reached and there was a price to pay. Uh, the budget was $600 for four sports and we were traveling. The only thing that didn't come out of their budget was the bus budget, thank God, because the bus, the buses were expensive and it would have eaten up to $600 immediately. But we had $600 for uniforms, invitationals, and those expenses to run a team. The association was founded for girls and by girls. They had few outside support and low budgets, aside from dealing with rude comments. The report goes on to state that the costumes are too circusy for high school girls and that the record of blackened eyes, scratched countenances, and bruised limbs of the last season is an argument against the game as far as the lassies are concerned. But these girls weren't just athletic. They were smart and found a way to get around those hurdles. The GAA made dances and special events for fundraising and sponsoring.
past two years I was the head coach. Um, involved, you know, obviously coaching girls, meeting a budget for the team. With a budget for the team, usually class. Uh, it depends, it depends on whether or not the girls need a uni uniform, warm ups, um, you know, food for me and stuff like that, and it could cost anywhere from $600 to $1,200 a season. So it's hard to get recognition and awareness from a female point of view that is also popular between both genders. Um, we don't get enough support from the media, for sure. And if you see in the newspapers, male dominating sports always get the most attention. Athletics presents opportunities in sportsmanship, leadership, courtesy, and other moral and social values. The GAA fought long and hard for equality until the remarkable journey was answered in 1972 by Title IX. Title IX was the federal law prohibiting sexual discrimination in educational institutions from the Educational Amendments Act, which then enabled girls to compete. Patsy Mink, a member of the U.S. House of Representatives of 12 terms, authorized the Title IX in 1972. Title IX was a breakthrough of opportunity for all women and finally improved equality in society. So you couldn't say it was boys' gym or girls' gym. It was co-ed gym at the time. Uh, all food classes, all auto shops, everything had to be opened up for op opportunities to uh, both genders. And it worked vice versa because if there was a girls um, team or girls class, it could no longer be titled that way. It had to be opened up to any student that was interested in that subject matter. Interscholastic sports for Morton girls was had begun, and we began with four sports. And I'm trying to remember. It was volleyball, track, badminton, and gymnastics, I believe. And then the next year in 73, 74, we added three more sports, swimming, uh, tennis, um, I'd have to be, I'd have to look back and see exactly what those records were. But then the third year we added softball, so it took us three years to get a complete complement of uh, sport for the female population of this country. In the Suburban League, uh, the schools that were involved were Evanston, Waukegan, Nutrier, Oak Park, Proviso East, and Morton. It was the oldest league, oldest conference in the history of Illinois. It's nice to see the girls want to be active, not that they feel like they have to, that they need to be, to make someone happy or um, to please somebody. Um, seems like a lot of females these days want to um, put on a public image based on what they do. But I feel like women are gaining more confidence in themselves, so they want to portray their own personality by showing people what they can do, if they can compete, if they can be active, and I feel that is important to a woman's um, self-image.